I was always taught years ago, I had a pastor named Pastor Alan Sires. And I was a bit of a rock and roll entertainer. Not very good at it, but I thought I was good. And I came to know the Lord in his living room, and it was a wonderful thing. One of the things he taught us, though, is to keep always heaven in your mind. Because the Bible says in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That sort of shows you the, the no limitation because there's no sickness in heaven, no poverty, no sorrow, no tears. No frustration. Can you say amen? And all of you are marked and sealed and going to go there. Now, if you're not sure, like for example, I have to say this because I want to make sure everyone is ready. If you died today, are you sure that you would go to heaven? Yes. But there might not be somebody on camera or somebody here today that is not sure. Maybe you were raised in a Christian family. You know, I walk into my garage, but I don't become a car. You can go to church and not be a Christian. So the thing you need to do, say the thing I need to do is I need to surrender, ask God to forgive me of my sin, and to come into my heart. You see, let me, you can stop there. <laughs> it's, it's by invitation. God doesn't dr drop down on you, knock you to the floor, and then come into your heart because you're such a bad person, does he? You have to do what? Ask him in. So make sure that you don't leave here today not asking Jesus as your Lord and Savior, okay? Now, you see, he comes in on the words of your mouth, not the thoughts of your head. So you can have godly thoughts all day long, but you're not going to have godly results. It comes out of the formulation of our words. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Can you say amen? scripture. I've gotten into the metal area. I want to get out of there real quick. All right, here's our scripture, Luke 7, 21 through 23. And that very hour he cured many of, of the infirmities and afflictions and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things which you have seen. Remember, John the Baptist was doubting that Jesus was even the Messiah. Now, he knew better. Jesus was John the Baptist's cousin. Six months difference. Then he says that the, you tell John that the blind see, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. And, the, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Is that everything? Okay, blessed is he, he's not offended because of me. How does God build his kingdom in the earth? Now, we know that at the day of Pentecost, everyone say Pentecost, the Spirit of God came in the earth and brought the kingdom. Say amen. amen. All right, so let me explain. That's the spiritual kingdom and provision. That kingdom and spiritual provision is designed to open its doors to those who bear the name of Jesus. If you can imagine a huge warehouse that has no end, and the Holy Spirit standing in front of the door, and in that warehouse is everything that you need to be a success, to be able to finish your life, to be able to walk, because these are the gifts and the callings of God's kingdom. Say kingdom. kingdom. So when a Christian approaches the kingdom, he either can approach the kingdom in the flesh, in religion, 
Or he can approach the doors of the kingdom, or the same doors of the kingdom, in Jesus. Which one will the doors open to do? He will open to the one that bears the name of so guess what? The kingdom is designed to keep the fleshly, carnal, worldly person out and the fleshly, listen, carnal, worldly Christian out. Now, don't look at me in that way because there are worldly, carnal Christians. Can't stay in church, can't sit under the word. Can't repent, can't do anything. And yet, you ask them, hey, would you really work on our marriage? You follow what I'm saying? And will they go to heaven? I believe they'll probably make it. Barely. We call it squeegeeing in. Can you say amen? So greetings, everybody. <laughs> Everyone say, I want more faith than just to be saved. I want to be able to have, a, have a, some steak on the plate while I wait. Can you say amen? All right, so we've been teaching on the new creation realities, and we're going to talk to you about how God builds his kingdom in us. Now, we know the kingdom came at Pentecost. As all in the molecules that you breathe, all the power, the gifts, the callings are all in that kingdom. But that kingdom only opens up to those who have Jesus first in their life. Everyone say, put Jesus first. Look at your neighbor and say, keep Jesus first. It, keep, it keeps you coming and going in the kingdom. Okay. Now, the way God builds his authority, dominion, and power in the earth is by giving his kids what it takes to build the kingdom in them. Remember when Jesus came, he said to many disciples, the kingdom of God is at hand. What was he saying? He says, I'm bringing you the first glimpse of the Father's kingdom. I'm bringing you the first tent of redemption, forgiveness of sin. The kingdom is at your hand. It's come. Now, Jesus was a type and shadow walking in the earth of the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Can you say amen? But when he said that I go to be with the Father, these things that I do will you do also. And even greater and greater volume will you do. Because I go to be with the Father, and because I go to be with the Father, I'll be your advocate. I'll be your backer. I'll be standing in you. I'll be doing the fighting. I'll be doing the talking. I'll be doing the walking through you if you learn to yield to me. That is the conditioning. That is the place that you and I are to be. Get to know God so well that God can use you faithfully and get things done. Say amen. Too many bricks Living bricks, I'm talking about Christians, have gotten off the wall. And they're going to churches at their choice. And because their friends and all these other things are in there, and it's all good. But are they going where God wants them to go? Are they listening the way God wants them to listen? Are they seeing the way God wants them to see? He's the one that's going to get us out of here. He's the one that's building his kingdom within us. Everyone say amen. Go with me to Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 through 38. So we see the first glimpse of the kingdom with Jesus. Amen. Now, I'm not playing him down because you have Jesus in your heart, don't you? Amen. You have the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, but the focus is Jesus. Remember, your focus is Jesus. Your love is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Your focus is Jesus because he's the one that focuses our prayers, focuses our, our attention, guides our steps. Oh, yeah, we're led of the Spirit. But what's the Holy Spirit's job? To keep us on Jesus, to keep us in tune with Jesus, to keep us unified with Jesus. Why? Because when we do that, the Father fully accepts us. We are accepted in the Beloved, is what the Scripture says. And I, I don't want, I, when I get up in the morning, I already know God loves me. He's been singing and worshiping over me. His kingdom is standing over me when I wake up. I don't wake up in a bad mood anymore. Because what I'm going through doesn't outweigh God being with me. 
I hope it doesn't now over. Yes, we have things we go through. Yes, we suffer things. Things are not always the, uh, come out the way we think, and usually it's because it's our fault. But nevertheless, God forgives us, restores us, but he wants us not to focus in the past. He wants us to focus on him as he guides us into the future. Say amen. amen. Yeah, he's guiding us into the future. All right, you got Matthew 9? Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in the synagogues. <clears throat> wow, a dry throat. Amen. Teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of what? The gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. Now, when you see the word kingdom, you need to always remember, it's always the same, Old Testament, New Testament. It means dominion, power, and influence. So when you hear the word God's kingdom, it's God's dominion, power, and influence. So God wants to build the kingdom in you. That means he wants to take over your life with his dominion, his power, and in his influence. Can you say amen? amen? So that when you pray for the sick, they recover. You just don't wonder why they didn't receive. You see, those that walk with Jesus never doubt. Those that only visit Jesus go without. Don't be a visitor of Jesus. Talk to him daily. Walk with him daily. Let him teach you the majesticness of heaven on earth. Was there anybody that Jesus prayed for didn't get healed? Oh, yes, there is. You guys need to know your Bible in his own hometown. It said many didn't receive him as the healer, received him as Joseph the carpenter's boy. And when you look at something through the natural eye, you keep the supernatural power from manifesting in your life. Say amen. So we often look by our eyes and hear with our ears when we should be testing with our heart what is of God and not. We actually have a, a third eye. And it's not your penile gland. <laughs> It's your spirit eye. Can you say amen? And who's guiding your spiritual eye? God. And he's showing you things out. I was talking with Scott. I'd, I love to talk with Scott. No. <laughs> we were talking about years, some time ago, I was talking to him how important it is to pray, ask God to get involved in your life three months out. Okay, out three months from now. Get him involved in setting everything up for you. You think that's too big for God? Now, that just got all of us. But what we do is we're immediate, oh, my God, prayer people. <laughs> Something happens, Seth, and we go, oh, my God, and we start praying. Why don't we cover everything that could go wrong way ahead before it does go wrong so it don't go wrong and we can have joy to replace the mess we forgot to pray about. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I could say that again, Peggy, but, or PJ, that's a, but that's the truth. We sandbag in our prayer and we don't pray out and cover everything. My goodness, you've got a lot of time. I can cover in 10 minutes what some of you wouldn't be able to cover in an hour. And listen, when you're in a prayer meeting, don't hog the prayer. Amen. Give everybody a chance to put some prayer in there. Say amen. Okay, what do you mean, Pastor Kerry? It's powers not in long prayers. It's in faith prayers. You can pray 10 words and move a mountain. And you can pray a million words and not move anything. Say amen. It's from the heart, not from the head. Okay, everyone, I got it. It says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion 
for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. That's you. If maybe you can't, can't get out of your apartment because you're, you're kind of more set. Lynn and I are set. We can't just get out and run our car all around and everything. No, we, we have a certain amount of body men in our house and everything. We pray. You know, we can give. There's other things. So don't feel like because you can't get out on the streets and witness. No, no you can pray. Folks, and as we get into the areas of prayer, how many ever uh, studied some war films? My dad and I used to watch war films together. Remember the Duke? Hey, Pilgrim. You know, you don't know who the Duke is? John Wayne. And the war stories, Green Beret and all. But if you notice, a lot of wars pre-planned. And just get out of the war part. But there are people that shoot bombs from locations over into the, where the enemy is, right? And then there's troops that carry the hand-to-hand -hand combat and those that lob and shoot grenades and everything. Well, why do we think that Christianity only is a couple little items? You could lob atomic bombs over into, into areas. If God is leading you by the Spirit, you have all authority in heaven and earth, don't you? Yes. Because who lives in you? So you take that authority and start lobbing God into places. Remember, we have not because... So there are some people that don't know to ask God, right? So we ask God on their behalf. That's lobbing a bomb, a bomb of blessings. Can you say amen? And I love to lob them. Here you go, Michael. Amen. Okay. So a couple of things we're going to cover. We're going to cover four things. Say amen. Number one, we are to seek the kingdom of God in his righteousness first. Two, the mysteries of the kingdom are for the believer. God wants you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Say amen. They're called mysteries because they're hidden, they're hidden from certain people, but revealed to other people. Which people are they, are they kept? Which people can't get involved in these mysteries? The world. God does things in the spirit, and the world can't get in the spirit. They're trying to, but they're doing it every other way. It's called New Age. Tarot cards, readings. Satan worship, all trying to get beyond God to get some kind of blessing. How many know that when you dabble with the devil, he never forgets you, and he's got a little <laughs> for you at the end. So don't dabble with the occult. None of it. Don't even think about it. Say amen. So we are to seek God's kingdom first. We are to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Three, the kingdom keeps the world out. You have something that you have access to the world cannot. Amen. That's why when you get to seeing the price of gas go up, laugh. Your God is not poor. The same God that gave you a dollar a gallon can fill your tank for five dollars a gallon. No skin off his back. It's your worrying that shuts things down. Amen. Hello? Hello, McFly. <laughs> I knew I had to do that. <laughs> I know you love that movie too. But but that's how, and that's how we operate. Oh my gosh, rice cakes have gone up ten cents. <laughs> if they, anyway, I don't go go there. And that's how we think. We think that we're regulated by the world. No, you're not. You live with an almighty God that seems to take good care of you. Have you noticed that? Now, if you're going through hell, that's because you did that. Please don't blame God for the problems you have. Get with God and he'll fix them. 
well, God, you didn't fix it yesterday, so I'm mad at you today. You don't plan to plant and come back the next day and want it to sprout. You know there's a certain time involved for God to sprout in a new believer. New believers come here, you get them on your prayer list, you start praying for them. Hello. Otherwise, Satan will come immediately and steal them away. Take a look. All right. So the kingdom keeps the world out. And then lastly, four, how God builds the kingdom in our heart. Now, the kingdom is here, but the word of God has got to be built in our heart because our head gets in the way. <laughs> I've decided to follow Jesus, but my head talked me out of it. My head talks me out of it. I wanted to say I love you, but my head said I don't want to. So my head talked me out of it. My head talked me out of it. Hey, we follow God with our head or our heart. Yeah. Your heart's like a child. Your head's like an idiot. <laughs> Come on, don't get mad at me. I'm talking about me. You thought I was talking about you. There you go. All right, so here we go. Number one, seek first the what? Kingdom. kingdom of God. What does kingdom mean? Dominion, power, and influence. Seek God's dominion. Seek God's power. Seek God's influence. The first thing you do is by accepting his son, Jesus Christ, whom all authority is given to. Amen. Then you submit daily to that authority. So that authority and kingdom is built up inside of you from the inside out. Say amen. So let's read the scripture, Matthew 6, 33 and 34. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, being right with God. And all these things that you have need of shall be added to you. In other words, you don't have to go out and worry about them. God says, I'll bring them to you. You just serve me, get busy, stay busy, and I'll bring you all your goodness. But if you leave me to go get your goodness, then you got tricked and deceived. A toaster, just because it looks good, doesn't toast until you plug her in. Listen, Christian, you better get to church and stay plugged in because these are the end times. All hell is coming down on the planet. And it said it would for thousands of years. So why are we so taken back? You don't live in the world. You live in a kingdom, and you have a God who is totally love and totally taking care of you and will judge anybody that harms or hurts you. That's what all this terror is about, the tribulation and all. It's to punish those that harm the Jews and the Christians. Say, uh-oh. So don't you pick on another Christian. Just leave it out from now on. There might be Joe Christian up the street. He's living in adultery. He's doing this, stealing from his boss and everything. Don't just carry him on in your conversation. Stop that. Turn him over to God. Say, God, I've turned that person over to you. I don't like what he's doing, but you know what? That's your child. Hands off. And so, Lord, clean him up. That's all you need to say. Now, you know God is going to be fair with that man or woman, Right? Right? How did Jesus treat the woman caught in adultery? He's a restorer. He tries to restore his kids. He doesn't want one lost. He wants them all coming to the knowledge of the truth. Trouble is, there's not very many good preachers out there. They're not preaching the truth. They're preaching condemnation. They're preaching uh, conviction, making people feel guilty. And then you leave church and says, how do you feel? like a hundred pounds of sin on a popsicle stick. <sighs> Maybe you ought to go to the Piala Fair and just hang out near one of the kiosks. Anyway, seek you first. The word seek is very important there, so kind of note it. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry. See, worry is something you come up with. Well, what is worry? It's meditating on what the devil says. Worry is meditating on the negative and what the devil says. Meditation 
is dwelling on what God says. Worry is dwelling on what the devil says and the negativity, the doubt and unbelief. Are you with me? So if you've got a bunch of doubt and unbelief, don't fill your mind with it, and especially all day. Why, oh, why, me, oh, me, how come, how come, don't know why, me, oh, me. Who's in the center now? You, oh, you. <laughs> why are you worried about yourself? You fell over dead today, you go directly to heaven? Come on, let's not get so concerned about ourselves. Didn't we turn our life over to God? Well, then stop dragging your life out of God's hands and run into yourself by worrying and all that kind of stuff. All right. And don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own self. Look at Luke, uh, excuse me, yeah, Luke 12, uh, 31 says, But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek means, write this down, seek means to go after, to desire, to crave after the kingdom of God. To go after, to crave, to desire after the kingdom of God. And being right with God, we do that by Jesus Christ. And everything that we have need of will be added to us. Has God been added to you? taking care of your needs? Isn't it funny? You're just busy, caught up in God, and suddenly somebody mails you a check, they owed you some money, and it shows up. And you're going, I thought I'd never see this. Wow. If all the people that owed my, me money and my previous church would pay up, I wouldn't have to work. It's over $100,000. That's all right. Christians... Can I borrow some money? You're going to pay it back? Yeah, here's my signature. <laughs> so what do I do? I just give it to God. Who's going to repay me anyway? God! Why am I concerned? God! Nowadays, if anybody comes to me and want to borrow money, first thing I do is we pray together. Amen. All right, let's move right on. My second point is this. The mysteries of the kingdom are given to the believers. Say mysteries. So you know the, the beauty of that word. That's a transliteration. That's when they didn't have a real word in the English for it, so they brought it over from the Greek, and they just added a couple of things, and they have the word mysterion, mysteries. Okay? And so I don't want to be too Greeky with you or geeky with you. I just want to teach you the word. Okay. So a mysterion means a hidden teaching revealed to only the club members. A hidden teaching that's only revealed to the club members. So if you don't belong to the club, you're not going to understand the teachings. I'm going to just sit on that. What club have we become a part of, Pastor Kerry? The born again, child of God, child of light club. Say amen. amen. And there the Holy Spirit opens the mysteries because we dwell in a kingdom with the Lord and Savior. And the information God wants us to have is so valuable, he wants it to come hotline, spirit to spirit, and not through just hand-me-down teaching. I don't want you to go over just what I teach. I want you to take it and go into the Word and dig stuff out so the Holy Spirit can make it personal to you. Say amen. And so, let's see what he means by that. In Luke chapter... Um, no, excuse me, Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. The mysteries are for the believer. Verse 10. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, those that are not saved, it has not been given. For to whoever has, to him more will be given. See, we need to continue to learn. If you don't continue to learn, even what you have will slip away. So you continue to learn the word. Keep, continue to go after the word. That's how God builds the kingdom in you. Say amen. amen. 
And it says, For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have the willingness to learn, even what he has will be taken away from him. How can you say that? What happens at your death? Everything that you thought you earned and learned, not going to last. And if it's not built on Christ, poof, hello. So we try to do everything that we can around Christ, amen, and build upon that. Now we can't do everything, but we know that what we do in the name of Jesus remains forever. Amen. All right, so let's ca catch this now. Okay, for whoever does not have, even what he seems to have will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing, they don't really see, and hearing, they're not really listening. Have you ever talked to people like that? I remember years ago, I first married. I'm sitting there, have our first child, and I'm reading the paper back then when we read the paper. Can you imagine that? And I'm trying to find some solace. I'm in a little teeny chicken coop house, sits on the old Buckley Highway on an acre of property. I'm sitting here minding my own business. And I'm reading the newspaper, and there is hurled at me from across the room a diaper bomb. A rolled up poopy diaper into a little gooby doo and tossed right through the paper, hit me in the chest, and the words, Are you listening to me? Come forth. God or my ex? <laughs> you decide. <laughs> Why did you say that? I want to let you time. There are people that have selective hearing. And it seems, bless your heart, you're not this way. It seems like a lot of them bring it to church. They'll sit there and they're coming to church because their girlfriend's at church. Now, if that fits, I'm not picking on you, okay? Or they come to church because they're friends. Or they come to church because they get attention. Or they got a gift they want everybody to hear from. You know the prophesy gift person? Whoa, I gotta prophesy every service. Because if I don't, then you haven't heard from God. Have you ever met somebody like that? I knew hundreds of them. <laughs> Amen. So I'm just kind of making light of all that. We only go to church to sit with God, like Mary at the feet of Jesus. Can you say amen? And then we get our social activity before or after church, and all day during the week long, it's wonderful. Nothing wrong with that. But when we come to church, that has to be for the right reason. Amen. Okay. All right. Now, could you imagine, can you imagine how God looks at everybody? Well, we got the group over here coming because they want to be famous. We got the little guy over here trying to make his own little church within the church. And we got all these things going on, you know. And God wants to make a mighty church out of that. And he can do it. Say amen. All right, let's move to our third point. Say third point. Third point. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are open to a believer. So again... Oh, sec that's actually the second point. But again, God wants us to know the what? The mysteries. So a couple points. Once we become born again, we have God dwelling on the inside of us. And if we have God, then we have the mind of Christ in us, don't we? If you'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the very last verse, it says, for we all have the mind of Christ. I know it might be you, but sometimes my head is not anywhere near the mind of Christ. But see, Jesus lives in us. So the mind of Christ is in our spirit. Say amen. And our head is being renewed. Our mind is being renewed. But the mind of God is in us. Amen. And then when we pick up our Bible and we read it, the God in us with the God we're reading on the page bears witness and the kingdom gets built in us. Do you hear that? And the two scriptures for that is 1 John 2, 20, and 27. First John 2, 20, and 27. For we have an unction of the Holy One, and we know all things. But that same unction on the inside of you will draw out what you need to know. That's God in you. Say amen. So, you could go to a dead church. That's where 
The only thing that moves is the mice. And, you know, anyway, a dead church is one where the gospel's not being preached. People are not paying attention. Okay? And you can learn all kinds of things. Why? Because the one inside of you is the one that gives you what you need to know. Say amen. Romans 1 says you can learn from walking in the woods. Romans 2 tells us not to become critical or judgmental. Romans 3 says by faith and not by works. Romans 4, remember Abraham, remember David. Romans 5, it says we are justified by faith, not by works, so don't judge anybody. Romans 6 tells us to die to ourselves. Romans 7 sees the struggle. Though I want to be good, I cannot be good. Only evil is present with me. Romans 8 says, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Romans 9 says, be careful not to be disrespectful for those in authority. Romans 10 says, you can change your life by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. And Romans 11 says, God has placed everybody in authority, respect authority, because God's in authority, and he put them there to be for your protection. Romans 12 says, die to yourself, learn to walk with Christ. Romans 13 tells you, make sure that you prepare your heart to love the brethren. Romans 14, don't you be a stumbling block to your brother and sister. Romans 15, you pay close attention to what's going on in the ordinances around you in the government. And Romans 16, farewell. You say, you're kidding. No, the book of Romans is absolutely perfect. Now, shall I go through Colossians and Ephesians? <laughs> Those are all doctrinal teaching books for us to build our life on, for God to build his kingdom in you. Say amen. And you have to get after it, because the more you get after the word, the stronger you become. Why? I thought it was when I pray. Yeah, when you pray. But what are you bringing to God? You're going to bring what understanding you know of the word to him, and he's going to teach you in his presence. How do you get revelation knowledge? God teaches you by the spirit. Can you say amen? All right, let's go to the third point now. The kingdom keeps the world out. How many know the world's not going to heaven? God wants everybody saved, though. Amen. Did you know in the end times, I'm going to blow your mind. This is for all of my way out there listeners. We have quite a few of those. I want to let you know that uh, God has eternity in mind for you. That means you're going to be traveling around the universe, hobnobbing with God. And not the Father. The Father never can get off the throne. You're going to be hobnobbing around with Jesus and his angelic host, the Elohim. Amen. It's going to be great fun. Say amen. All right, but God keeps the world out of the kingdom because the world is corrupted and polluted. Now, he's not against people. He's against the corruption Satan has infused into the world. And if you know anything about infusion, how to infuse an oil with maybe uh, uh, perfume, how to infuse an oil with a fragrance, is you let it soak and soak up all of those flavors. Well, God wants to infuse our life with his flavor. But we got to spend time with him. Can you say amen? It doesn't happen overnight. So he says... Mark 10. Go with me to Mark chapter 10. Look at verse 23. Ten, then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples. Who's he talking to? His disciples. He's not talking to a multitude. Says to his disciples, How hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard is it for those who trust, there's the key, who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. You see how a rich man just can't go in by his money? Can you see why just being good, you can't go into the kingdom? The kingdom of God will only open to those who have the seal and the mark of Christ in them. And that, listen to me carefully, right here, the ones that have Jesus in front, 
I know a lot of Christians that the beer can and everything else is before God. It's not that they don't love God, but when they need help, do you think the kingdom is going to open up and give them what they need? It can't. They tie their own hands. So what should a person do? Repent. Seek God daily and you won't let those things take over your life. Say amen. You got to remember, Pastor Kerry's mom made moonshine. I was raised on 120 proof. Do you understand? <laughs> Nobody was sober at the potluck. But at, the, but at the whole thing, I, God called me out of that mess and everything. He keeps the world out of his holy places. And one of his holy places is a spiritual kingdom that he's building in you through his word. And the more in the word we become, the more stable and more full of dominion, power, and influence we become. Look at Billy Graham. I asked God a long time ago, why is Billy Graham so anointed? And of course, this is big mouth carry when I was young and I didn't know any better. You can't even preach, God. <laughs> it's my words. Because <laughs> I thought preaching was jumping around and getting everybody going and everything. I, I was just ignorant. So forgive me, will you? When a man seeks God or a woman seeks God, it's the seeking of God that makes the anointing grow. That man, Billy Graham, lived with God. He could drop a pencil and somebody would get saved. That's what I, as your pastor, want to happen to you. That you will be with God so much that people will just flock to you, want to know why you believe the way you do, why you act the way you do. How, tell me about your Jesus, because they see such great power and influence in your life, and you didn't do a thing. Isn't that what we're living for? Yeah. Isn't that why we're witnesses? Yeah. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be a witness for me. Aren't we ambassadors for Christ? Yeah. One who speaks on behalf of, one who moves in power and is backed by God? <laughs> we are. Just don't get distracted on you. Remember, this planet is a big distractive barn. And everywhere you go, have you been in one of those big barns? I was one in went on vacation where my granddaughter has a, a Mustang horse and she's learning to raise it all up. And big barn with a bunch of dust and horse patookies everywhere. Well, this earth is a big barn full of dust and a lot of horse patookies. So lift your feet when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> Remember I told you about me when I was a kid? My, my sister babysitted me all the time, and I was the guy that always found the road apples, you know, the lawn bombs. And I would step in it, and then I would come into the theater and sit next to everybody, and everybody would be going... Why are you saying that, Pastor Curry? I'm saying that's how we begin to smell like when we don't stay fresh with God. Say amen, somebody. All right, so let's see how God builds the kingdom of God in us and keeps the world out. Notice how hardly he said for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. In other words, impossible. That's the real answer. Now, I know there's a little door called the eye of the needle, and they unload the camel and stuff, but I haven't got time for that in my sermon. Hello. It is impossible for you to buy your way in, con your way in, to do anything other than surrender to God. He carries you in. Say amen. Amen. Somebody says, you're just using Christianity for just a crutch. You're just using Christianity as a crutch. I'll, I'll tell them, not a crutch, a stretcher, because I can't even limp into heaven. 
God carries us there. So why don't you stop wiggling around, surrender and die to yourself and ask God to put your life back together so that you become the success that you dreamed to be. I'm talking to you back there. You are meant to be a success, but you've got to surrender to God and follow him. Are you with me? And... And the, so the disciple says, how can a rich man be saved? How can anybody be saved then? He says, it's impossible for you who trust in anything else but God to be saved. Say, I got it. So you guys are very intelligent. You don't need me to explain everything to you. So let's go to the final point. Say, final point. Amen. God builds his kingdom of God within you. Go back to Matthew 13 if you haven't left. If you have left, I mean. Now, you must understand that the Word was with God and the Word was God. If the Word was God, the Word still is, for God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, when you learn, listen, I, I teach in series all the time. I, and you wonder why I repeat myself over and over again. Because it's what you catch, not what you hear. You have to hear over and over again. So when you speak the word from your gut or the core of your being, that's where the power is. A lot of people pray off the top of their head because they want to get praying done. But off the top of your head's okay if you're speaking loud, but it is very shallow. And you'll hear people say, it sounds like my prayers are just bouncing off the roof of heaven. You ever heard something like that? You know, that's not even in the Bible. Where does that come from? Yeah. No, when you say, Father, in Jesus' name, you are in heaven. Okay, this is New Testament. So when you say, Father, in Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit puts you into Christ. Christ walks you before the throne of God. And if you can see it in the Spirit, you're sitting right before the Heavenly Father. But because we're not always spiritually aware like we should be, but we're going to get that way, we're more aware of us sitting in our seat or where we're praying from. But if you can close your eyes and say, Father, in Jesus' name, imagine the Holy Spirit just in a split second. Whoop, 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 and right before the throne. You see, in the Old Testament, God had to bring the, them the answer. In the New Testament, we go up before the throne, and he gives us the petitions that we ask for. He hands the answer to us while we're before him in prayer. That means, whether you see it or not, you're holding the title deed to your home. If I put the title deed to your new home in your hands, and even though it's not quite built yet, are you going to run around going, I wonder if I got a home. I wonder if I got a home. I wonder if my prayers are being answered. I wonder if I got a home. Folks, when you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you whoop and bleep, you're right before the throne of God. How many here didn't know that? You all knew that? Then how come you're not living a more victorious life? Ah, I'm just joking. You are. But see, people don't know that. I mean, I'm listening to a man has been preaching for years. He says, oh, like Daniel, we got to pray. And then sometimes our prayers, God's got to battle our prayers in and fight with the prince of this and the prince of that just to get our prayers to us. That's Old Testament. Jesus hadn't died and rose again yet. And when he died and rose again, what did he do with the keys? He took them. Who has all authority? Jesus does. So what's the devil? The devil's trying to convince you you're still in the Old Testament living out of a barn. You're so unworthy. Don't bother God with little things. That's a word for you. He's too busy to answer your little prayers. That's not so. He wants to answer every wish, every prayer. Pray. Say amen. All right, so let's look at this. 
and finishing. <laughs> All right, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, the word of the what? Kingdom. There you go. And does not understand it. The wicked one comes and snatches away it. what was sown in their heart. Who comes immediately? So we have a visitor today. And guaranteed, it will be hard for that visitor to come back here because the enemy will try to keep him from coming back so that the word doesn't take root and they grow up. We have quite a few haven't returned. We should be praying that the root of Christ grow up in their heart and not their head. You offended me, and so I'm throwing you all away because you offended me. Now, what kind of Christianity is that? You dumped me because you lost somebody? <laughs> not very valuable, not very respectful. Folks, I believe you are here because God wants you here. And for you not to be here, you're disobeying God. Right? Now, I'm not really, I'm not legalistic about it because everybody has a place they grow. But if God planted you here, don't change God's mind for him. Because <laughs> you got offended. That's baby, baby stuff. I'm taking my bat and my ball and I'm going home. Boy, we're going to get spiritual win a battle now. Do you hand somebody like that a grenade and say, kill the enemy? No, he's liable to drop it in the foxhole. All right, so let's move on. So immediately, Satan tries to come immediately. He's going to come and try to steal what I've shared with you today. You come back, okay? Amen. Okay? And then it says, this is the one who receives seed on the wayside. But he who receives the word on stony places... This is who heart the word, excuse me, who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, and but has no root in himself, but endures for a time, but afterward when persecution and trials come because of the word's sake, they are offended and they fall away. Folks, I remember when I first got saved, you know what my friend said to me? Well, I hear you got religion now. I looked at him, I says, no, I don't got religion. I got Jesus. And he says, well, we're, we don't like what you got. I says, if you were really my friends, you would love whatever makes me a better person. But you're not my real friends. You're just the grasshoppers. When I got the grass, you hop over here. And when I got the booze, you come over here. Now I'm saved. I want you to have Jesus and you stay far away. Are they really your friends? So they went on stony grounds. Hear the word. But the enemy, because of the cares and all this stuff, entering in and they get offended and they go away. That's why older Christians pray for the visitors. Amen. Oh, I wonder what happened to so-and-so. Didn't you call them? Didn't you reach out to them? My job is to train you for the work of the ministry. Did you know that? Not me do all the work of the ministry. You come and see the entertainer. Whoops. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I belong to one of the largest churches in this area, and I was pleased to be a member of it. I helped it grow to large membership. It's the largest church in, in this immediate area. Amen. They had a band... Blow your mind. The only one I know has a band better is Dr. John Hagee in Texas. He's got a great worship team. There's probably a thousand members in it. <laughs> Trumpets and everything. You know, I'm just a musician at heart. But listen, God is beautiful, and he wants you to be a beautiful instrument, to bring beautiful songs of praise and worship to him. Can you say amen? Kind of like what you did to Christy the other day in the morning. That was a wonderful thing. You and God just had a time. Amen. So listen. Okay, here's the next one. Each one of these grounds, the, the wayside, the stony, okay, the thorny, 
and the good ground are all conditions of how we receive the word. So I'm going to share that now. So the person that could care less, they're always in the back, not paying attention. Not knowing that the very words of their entire life, they're going to have to give account of. Say, oh me. And those by the wayside, if they come, oh, mom and dad want me to be at church. It's all wonderful and everything like that. But now your friends are picking on you because you got Jesus. So you get offended and you don't, you're kind of ashamed of that. And, and so you just kind of fall away. And the next ground I'm just going to quote it for is what we call s stony ground. Everyone stay stony. <laughs> no. <laughs> stony ground means the ground is unable to put seed deep in because there's stones in all the ground. They have to be removed. And that means that sometimes there are a lot of things in our life that are like stones. The cares of this life. What is a care of this life? Worry. Hello, you're going to get up tomorrow? Are you concerned about your breath? Maybe your wife is. <laughs> no, no, I don't know where that came from. Anyway, you get up in the morning, you're not worried about your next breath. It's there. That's faith. But we get up in the morning and we wonder, I wonder if this is going to happen. I wonder if that's going to happen. Did you pray? Yeah. Well, then stop wondering. Start thanking. I'm talking to two people now. I don't know who we are. God doesn't always let me know. But you need to start thanking more and stop wondering as much. So the stony ground keeps the seed from going down and br bringing root. Folks, all of us have to have deep roots. Our deep roots have to go down into God and down into his word and down into his love. Three things. God, his word, his love. God is all three of those things. Isn't God God? Isn't God his word? His word God? And isn't God love? And love, the love of God? God? Yeah, we're not talking about human love, okay, or sloppy agape. We're talking about God's unconditional love that knows no change. Okay. So, stony ground is that human being who has so much in their life, the word can't take root. Gee, I wonder what happened so and so. They were so on fire. They were just like a cloud without water, like, like a, a wave that crashes on the rocks. They're there, but now they're gone. What happened to them? Because they were all talk and no walk. Did you know I've met professional talkers in the body of Christ? They can talk a talk and they can preach a sermon, but their walk is awful. It's quiet in here. Everybody does a self-reflection when they do it. It's terrible. I'm talking about through 45 years of ministry. I've been ministering over 45 years. Seems like just yesterday. But they're just all talk. I call them parrots. Rock. Polly want a cracker. Polly want a cracker. You, you have to believe God. Believe and confess. Believe we You better watch out. And there's a lot of repeating. Now, please, I'm just hamming it up. None of you fit any of that. But back in a while, a lot of people were just mimicking what they were seeing on TV or other evangelist ministers do. And they got a certain amount of success. But then when hard times come and things come, it beats upon that sprouting seed in our heart. And if we don't have the roots in us, if we don't have the wherewithal, the purpose in us, we're going to fall away. But God doesn't give up on us now, okay? How many good listeners do we have? Those on good ground, that's the good listener. Remember Proverbs 133 says, He that listens to me shall dwell safely and be quiet from any fear of evil. Okay? He that on good ground is he that hears my sayings and does them. Hears my sayings and 
Here's my sayings and here's my sayings. I'm just tired of doing the word. <laughs> That's how God builds his kingdom in you. You hear the kingdom, you read the kingdom, and then you do the word. You read here, do. Read here, do. Sometimes as you do, you understand. Read here, do, understand. Read here, do, understand. Understand, read here, do, and everything grows and grows. I can get more out of John 3.16 and 20 or 30 different more sermons than I could the first time I ever read it. Why? Because the truth grows. It develops in you like a kingdom. Now, what does the word kingdom mean? Dominion, power, influence. So, how many here have God's dominion, power, influence? Raise your hands. How many here want to build that up? How many here want to be able to walk into a room and everybody, you got everybody's attention because they don't know what's on you? God. You come on, we're believing for revival. Why do you think all those prayers are going out in those colleges and everything? And now you don't hear much of it, scaring everybody. But it's increasing. Let me tell you, it's increasing. They're praying for you to get on fire for God. Because first, God has to burn the chaff away, and fire burns the chaff. Can you say amen? And, the, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and... What is the fire for? To burn up the chaff and the worthlessness of our life so that God can take over in God's dominion, power, and influence runs our life. You read Acts 2, and they broke bread, and they went from house to house, and they fellowshiped around the word of God and, and prayer, and, and it says that fear came upon every soul. I want them so, us to be so anointed that Jehovah Witnesses people down here quake. Don't go over there. You're going to become a Christian. You see what I'm saying? So get the lid off of our, our believer. Amen. Did you get something out of that this morning? Yes. Now remember those four points. God's building that into your heart.